Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, who does Jesus think he is? Self-identity is who or what a person believes he or she is. Each person has an identity and it is associated with their name. Psychology Today magazine gives the following definition. Identity encompasses the memories, experiences, relationships, and values that creates one's sense of self. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Mary, had a self-identity. He had an answer to the question, who am I? In his growing up years in Nazareth, he would have easily said he was the son of Joseph and Mary, whose parents in turn were so-and-so, in other words, his grandparents, his aunts and uncles. Naturally, Mary and Joseph shared with him at the proper times the events surrounding his birth. From an early age, the boy Jesus had a sense of his special relationship to God. The clear statement of his self-identity is found in his response to Mary and Joseph at the age of 12, when he had stayed behind in the temple, engaging with the rabbis and priests in biblical and theological discussions after the family had traveled to Jerusalem for Passover. After searching for him for three days among the caravans, they found him. He was in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Don't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. It's found in Luke chapter 2, ending at verse 49. Jesus at this stage in his life understands that he is the son of God whom he knows to be his father in a special sense. Individual Israelites did not think of themselves individually as sons and daughters of God. God referred to the nation collectively once as my firstborn son in Exodus chapter 4. But individual Israelites or Hebrews did not think of themselves in those terms. But later, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he taught them to pray like this, Our Father, a radical way of thinking then. It expresses a personal, intimate way of speaking to God most high. Jesus' growing sense of human yet divine sonship is climaxed at his immersion by John the baptizer in the Jordan when he was then compelled by the Spirit to begin to exercise his calling and ministry as the Messiah. What he knew to be true of himself became evident to John the Baptist when the Father, God himself, spoke to Jesus in John's hearing and said, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. From that moment, Jesus took up his prophetic calling as God's anointed servant, the Messiah, the Christ of God. Was just Jesus' own understanding or or simply the opinion of others? How does Jesus' identity or how does Jesus identify himself in the three or four years of his ministry? Sometimes people would identify him as a prophet, even think he was a son of God like a king, like David. However, Jesus had a favorite self-designation. He called himself the Son of Man. Now, sometimes we think he's simply calling himself human, but this is not the meaning of the term. In the Gospels, the term Son of Man is used by Jesus about 80 times as a mysterious, indirect way of speaking about himself. Matthew, for instance, uses it 32 times, Mark 14 times, Luke 26 times, and John 10 times. In all of these texts, Jesus was always the speaker. He called himself the Son of Man. No one ever addressed him as Son of Man. They might address him as the Son of David, but they never addressed him as Son of Man. Tyndall Bible Dictionary is the source of that information. Since Ezekiel had used the term as a way God addressed him, Jesus is using it to identify himself as an eschatological prophet who had the last word about the destruction of Jerusalem 
In fact, in the book of Hebrews, it would tell us it's a reference to Jesus as the prophet, who is the substance of all the prophets, and who himself speaks the last word from God. Jesus said to his disciples, or asked his disciples, this question. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So the term itself comes directly from Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. So when Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that the Son of Man is, follow now, who do you say that I am? The conclusion generally drawn is that Jesus used the term as a messianic title for himself so that he could speak modestly about his person and mission, yet convey the exalted content he wished to reveal about himself. Again, Tyndall Bible Dictionary. Jesus shied away from a direct designation of himself as Messiah or Christ due to the popular misconceptions of the term. Yet he did on occasion clearly state that he was indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the long-expected one. Now this is clearly seen in John's Gospel, chapter 4, where he encounters the woman at the water well at noontime. In the conversation exchange, she perceives he is a prophet because he told her things about herself that he would not have known unless it had been directly revealed. After relating to her the true nature of worship, the nature of true worship, and the fact that she could find the source of eternal life in him, she says to him, I know that Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he will explain everything to us. I am he, Jesus told her, the one speaking to you, John 4, 26. Jesus, she went into the town telling people about him, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They left the town, and they made their way to him, to Jesus. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, John 4, 42, We no longer believe just because of what you said, but now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Jesus also acknowledges that the disciples' identification of him as the Messiah is the correct answer to his inquiry, Who do you say that I am? Now, this began as soon as he started calling his disciples. The first two whom he called were disciples of John the Baptizer. They were John and Andrew cousins and friends. One of the two who had heard John the Baptist and followed Jesus to his lodging that day was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And we read in John 1, he first found his own brother Simon and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. A year or two later, Peter makes the great confession on behalf of all the 12. Jesus said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then after the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus' discourse on himself as the bread from heaven, many found this to be a hard saying, and they left off from following him. So he turns to the twelve and asks them, Will you also go? But Peter makes this confession, We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus is very clear with his disciples at the last Passover that he shared with them before his crucifixion in John 13 and 17, who he is. Here he discloses to them his and the Father's identity and their unique relationship along with the Spirit whom they will send to him. Jesus tells uh, them in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There can be no doubt about Jesus' self-identity as the unique Son of the Father who came from the Father's side, as stated in John 1, 18. We see this after his statement under oath to the high priest at his trial before the Jewish authorities. And it's recorded by Mark 
Matthew and Luke. And I want to share all three of those accounts with you so that you can get the full force of it. Mark 14, verse 60. The high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it which these testify against you? But he stayed quiet and he answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of the sky. The high priest tore his claws and he said, What further need have we of witnesses? You've heard the blasphemy. What do you think? Matthew chapter 26, verse 62, we read the following. The high priest stood and said to him, Have you no answer? What is these that testify these against you? But Jesus held his peace. The high priest answered him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said it. Nevertheless, I tell you, after this you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of the sky. He's basically quoting Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Then the high priest tore his clothing and said, He spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Behold, now you've heard his blasphemy. What do you think? And the last parallel is found in Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 66. When they came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Now Luke's is sort of a composite from the testimonies that he heard. Whereas Matthew's is more of a direct, and so is Mark's, who would be giving Peter's recollection. Now what was Jesus doing in his confession? He was applying Daniel 7, 13 and 14 directly to himself. And this is what Daniel 7, 13 says. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. Dominion was given to him and glory and a kingdom that all the people's nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away and his kingdom one that will not be destroyed. Now this is an absolute claim to be the Messiah, the Son of God. This is what Jesus was referring to by his use of the title Son of Man. So let me go back to the question. What is Jesus' identity according to Jesus? Who does he really think he is? He told his disciples twice on the day he arose from the dead. We read about it, Luke 24. These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And they said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And their repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And Acts, or Luke volume 2, tells us how this began to be accomplished. So this is the reality that undergirds the use of the name Lord Jesus Christ that we find in the letters of Peter and Paul and its variations in the Acts and the Epistles. To know Jesus, you must know who he is. You must trust in his very person and what he did for our redemption on the cross and his resurrection and ascension to receive eternal life and the forgiveness of your sins. To know God, you must know his unique Son who is with him. He who honors the Son honors the Father who sent him. This is the testimony of the Apostle John. He writes in his epistle, 1 John chapter 4, 
verse 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world, the Son of Man, whose cross and resurrection are the basis of eternal life? You must believe and follow him. To know Jesus is to know the way of salvation, the way of fellowship with the living God that will begin now and will last forever. Hear the prayer of Jesus himself, the words that he utters in the presence of his disciples just before he goes to the garden to pray, and then he's led by the authorities to begin the sufferings that culminated in his death on the cross. These are the words our Lord uttered, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, so that he will give eternal life to all whom you have given him. This is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and him whom you sent, Jesus Christ. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights. But the next time, remember, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent.